This video will explain how to use R data packages and the gap minor data package. The advantage of using R data packages is obvious. You can install those data packages once and then load them with the library function when you need the data. So accessing R data packages is probably the easiest. This video will explain how to use the GapMinder data package. The GapMinder data package is created by Jennifer Brian for teaching purposes, and it contains a small portion of the original GapMinder data set. You can find the information about the package on this website. As an excerpt of the data package, uh, as an excerpt of the large GapMinder database, this package includes only six variables. Country, continent, year, life expectancy, total population, and GDP per capita. And um, this data is available for 142 countries for every five years from 1952 to 2007. To install the GapMinder package, you need to follow the same procedure that applies to any R package. So you navigate to Tools, Install Packages, and then type GapMinder and click Install. Now, to use the GapMinder package, load it into R using the library function. Now that you have loaded a data package into R, how do you check if the data are what you wanted? And how can you see what data is in the package? How do you get to know your data as an initial card? There are several things you can do to get to know your data. First, let's take a look at the raw data in a spreadsheet like view. You can use the view function that you, we used many times in the prior videos in this video series, or you could use the data function to view the data and see the data set listed in the environment panel. This is the environment panel in the upper right area. So let's use the data function. Applying the data function to the data package allows you to see two things. In the upper right area, um, called Global Environment Panel, you see the total number of observations, 1,704 observations, and um, six variables. All the information for the data set is the same as the listed on the README web page on the crnrproject.org website. Once you load the data this way, you can always click on the data set in, in your environment to pull up a visual of the data set itself when you want. Seeing the raw data helps you to check that you are working with the correct data. You may also apply the names function to ask for the names of all the variables, especially if the number of variables is large, which may be true for many of the data sets with which you work in the future. Now we can see the names of all variables here. Next, you may apply the summary function for descriptive statistics of the data set. The 
The summary function shows different descriptive statistics for two types of variables, for country and for continent variables, the number of observations for each group so is listed. For example, continent variable has one, two, three, four, five groups. And for each of the groups, we see the number of variables, number of observations. So for the uh, group Africa, there are 624 observations, for example. For the group Asia, there are 396 observations, for example. On the other hand, for our country group Afghanistan, there are 12 observations. For year, life expectancy, population, and GDP per capita, we can see the minimum first quartile or 25th percentile, median, mean, the third quartile or 75th percentile value, and the maximum value. R treated the um, former as character or factor variables. So these two are character or factor variables. And these four variables are numeric or integer or double precision floating point number variables. Now you may apply the as table function from the table package, which is part of the TDverse collection. And this function allows you to see different pieces of information, such as dimensions of the data set, number of rows and columns, variable names, variable types, first few lines of the raw data. So we can see that these two variables are factor variables, and these four are numeric variables, um, which can be the integer or uh, double precision floating point number variable. So as shown in, um, also in this output, that there are 1,704 observations, and this corresponds to this number in the global environment panel and six variables. So in other words, there are 1,704 rows in this data set and six columns. Each column corresponds to one variable. And we can also see the first 10 rows of observations in this output. As you can see, you may apply all these steps that we have just did to other data sets for data verification and explore, initial exploration, just to get to know your data set once you download it for the first time.